Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to look at PostgreSQL transaction. I'm going to show you how to commit, roll back, and do save points. I hope you enjoy this video. The source code for this video is at this GitHub address, github.com slash software nuggets slash PostgreSQL underscore transaction. Now to look at an individual file, just click on the file name Copy the source code into your clipboard, then paste it into your favorite SQL editor, then follow along. I hope these files, along with the video, will help you learn what transactions are in PostgreSQL. In this video, we're going to look at three features. We're going to look at begin transaction, or you can just say begin. And for every transaction, there is a commit or rollback. Now, once we master this first set, then we can go look at set two, save points. So we can create a save point, we can roll it back, or we can release it. So once we get this done, this is pretty much, you know, like 80% of all the work we need to do about transaction. Now, the last 20% record locking, well, we have to understand this. We have to be able to undo a record lock, especially if we lock up a colleague. And this is a big problem in databases in general. It doesn't happen a lot, but when it does happen, a lot of people are scrambling. Now, you'll notice here on lines 14 and 15, I have two commands to drop the table, HR employee, and to truncate. So drop table, well, you know what that does. It just removes it from the catalog. Truncate just removes all the data. I use these just to keep this video rolling and rolling correctly. Let's do it. So let's create the table called HR employee. Notice create table HR employee and it has three columns. And our first column is called emp ID, that's employee ID. And we're gonna say, I want you to be an integer, not null. Not null just means it's required. Our second field is annual salary annual salary. This data type is numeric and it is also not null. Now our third field is going to be a generated column. So we're going to say hourly rate and it is also numeric and generated always as some function and then we're going to say stored. Now when we say generated, what's, what does that mean? Well that means this column will be computed and we're going to compute that with annual salary divided by 2080. 2080 is the number of hours that people in North America have to work for it to be a full year. And there is our table. Let's go ahead and create that. Now remember, the see this already exists? So I can say drop table, and then I can recreate that. And that's how that works. Please notice here at the top, I have kind of two windows. In this first window, I'm going to be entering a command and then we're going to go see if the, another window kind of like a whole nother user can actually see the work that we're doing so now what we're going to say is begin transaction and then after we say begin transaction we type in a command and we can do a command like put a value in there so we say insert into what is the name of our table hr employee and one of our columns emp id and annual salary now we're not going to use hourly rate because that is a generated column so we're going to say values and so the employee id is one and the annual salary we'll say is forty thousand. now this is our our first transaction so for me to begin this transaction i have to say begin transaction and then do an insert now before you learned how to use begin transaction you could come here and just say insert into there execute that and then you'd be able to see that data select star from HR employee. So notice the data is already in our database. Now, any other user that can see this table, even in this window, they can see it. I can now execute this and notice I get to see the values. Now in the second transaction, what we're going to do is we're actually going to say begin trans action and then we're going to do an insert. So begin transaction, insert uh, two and 60,000 and then let's see if that data is actually in the table called employee now You can see it here, but it's actually not visible to the world yet Let's go look at that other window. So when I say select star from employees notice We only see the employee ID one until I do the command commit or roll back Nobody else gets to see any of my work now What I normally always do is I always put comments in front of these 
just in case I come in here and I hit F5 and I never want these commands to execute. So you'll see in pretty much all my programs, I always comment these out. So now to make this be preserved so this other window can see the data, what I have to do is say commit. Now commit, I just come up here and execute that. And when I come over here to the second window, notice employee two is now available. And of course they're available here. I think you see it. So for every transaction, we have two actions, either commit or rollback. Commit saves, rollback undoes that transaction. In our second transaction, notice that we're doing a same insert statement. Instead of doing one column, we're doing, I'm sorry, one row, we are actually doing six. Now, when we say begin transaction, that begins it. We've learned that. And then we can either do a commit or rollback. Now transaction, the word itself is optional. So we can, we don't have to use that. So we can say begin, execute that. And now we're inside of a transaction. I can execute, it's inserted. You know when I come over here and try to do a select, I'm only gonna see our first two rows here. And then when I come back over here and do a rollback, that means all of these transactions, I actually don't want to save them to the database. As you can see here in this window, which I'm showing you a dirty SQL statement because these really don't exist yet, I can hit rollback, select the data, and notice I only get rows one and two. In this view, a new user, when they select the data, notice they only get one and two as well. So in this lesson, we renamed begin transaction to just begin. We insert data into our table, HR employees, and we use the rollback command to actually roll back the changes that we wanted to apply to the database. I found this definition on the internet and it kind of really explains what a save point is. And I guess it all boils down to this one sentence. Allows the application to recover without having to cancel the entire transaction. So if you can remember that, that'll make sense in this. Now we need to always say begin transaction. Execute that. Now once we have begun this transaction, notice I have inserts. I have updates, I have a delete, and that's inside of my transaction. Now, at the very end, I have the option to do a commit or a rollback, and we have learned that already. So when I go and do these three insert statements, notice I'm gonna put a save point, and I'm gonna call it emp3. Now notice here, I keep renaming it different. I can use the same, and as I use the same, it actually, the last one is the one that takes over. So notice here that I'm now at M3. So if the world ends and I get errors in any of these, I can roll back to this M3 and I can at least get three insert statements out of this whole transaction. Now I can come down here and say commit right now and these three would be in here because notice I'm doing line by line. But when I push these onto the stack to be processed, you'll notice right now that we have three transactions that are needed to be processed. Now when I execute lines 36 through 39, notice I have two more insert statements and then I'm updating employee ID one to 41,000. It was 40, let's do that. And then let's see what's going on. And notice here that employee one is now sitting at 41,000. So one, two, three, four, five. So you can see what's happened now. So this right here is what our database would look, if I did commit right now, this is what our database would look like. Now, if I roll back to three, the employee for number one rolls back to 40. Let's do that. So see this save point three? I can come down here and say roll that back to three, execute, and then let's select from there and notice it's back to 40,000. So I think you understand what a save point means now. Now the next thing that we want to look about is this release save point. So notice how I'm putting these onto like a stack. And if I want to remove the save point emp5, all I'd have to do is come down here and say, just remove that and then I cannot roll back to it. So let us go ahead and do these next statements to emp8 and let's see what's available and you can see here that I'm to id8 right now if I say release save point emp5 that doesn't change what's in my queue to be processed but now I cannot roll back to emp5 emp5 does not exist this is gone now when I try to 
Roll back to AMP5 now, you'll get an error. AMP5 does not exist. Now we can roll back to AMP3, and unfortunately that removes all my other transactions. So let's execute that, do a select, and notice we're back to the original three. Then I can do a commit, and guess what? We are done, and other users can now see the records that we have processed. So hopefully all of this makes sense. Now you can use this same name here. I could have called these all emp3. That's not probably not, let me just call it emp. Emp, emp, and emp. Now let's uh, go ahead and uh, delete all this data in here, I'll truncate it, and then I'm gonna begin a transaction. And then notice I'm gonna do my first three, and let's go see what the data is available. You'll notice we have three. So if I do my second set and I say execute, notice that we have just changed the EMP save point to line 39. Now if I come down here and just do two entries inside of here, wall three, insert, select my data, let's notice I'm down to line eight. Now if I do a rollback to EMP, where will it go? Well, it should go back to where the salary was 41,000. Let's see that. Ready, roll back, and let's see what the data looks like. And you see that one is 41,000. So it kind of like went back to this one. Now, can I say roll back to EMP and go back up here? No, this right now is now EMP. So if I try to re-execute this and then select star from that, you know, this, this is now EMP. It takes this one over. So now you see if you're using the same name, say point name, the last one is the position inside of your transaction. And that is the say point. Now, it is quite possible when we're doing updates through transactions that our screen can get locked up, and that can put our database in a headlock. So we need to know this next commands. So the first thing I'd like to show you is something about the PG stat activity. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to look at what's going on, and it's gonna show our active and abandoned processes. So, so these are all of the ones that are currently available to us now. Now, do you see this PID? This is a very important column, and this is the actual Windows ID, the process to make that window work. So do you see where it says 20,328? Well, that's this window. So when I execute this command, you know, like what is the PID for this window? You know, it comes out and tells me it's 20,328. This last window, is uh, 47864. So now you see where these numbers come from. Now for me to do something like uh, kill that process, that PID, we're gonna need this next statement. And this next statement is powerful and um, it's kind of deadly. So do you remember when we were on this last window and we said that is 47, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that value, 47, and we're gonna put it into this statement replacing these a's let me straighten this up so notice the name of the method is called pg terminate backend pid now pid not equal that background pid remember we executed that to actually get our pid for the screen you saw me do that i don't want it to be this window i want to be able to execute from this window now my state will be idle and now you understand that this PID 47864 is this last window. So we're gonna kill that PID, let's do that. And then I'm gonna execute, and then what happened is, whatever was running in this window is now dead. It has stopped, which is great. So when we come back to our first window and we look at our statuses, notice that 47 is now gone. So any process that was running in that window has been stopped. Now, if we want to take out our second window, then we would just use this uh, 20,328. Let's do that. So get it in there, execute, and let's show you all your activities. So now you know how to kill a runaway process if something hangs up your computer. You can now come and enter these commands, like show you, and then kill it. You can do that now. Now another thing we need to understand about transactions, they lock the table. And let's do this example. Notice I'm gonna select the data and notice the annual salary for employee one is 30,000. So now I'm gonna get the PID that's associated with that and that's 51136. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna begin a transaction and then I'm gonna update its value to three. Notice I'm gonna do that command. 
And then I'm going to go to another window and notice this says uh, update, same table, set the annual salary to 222 for employee one. Now let me just try to execute that command. Notice this is saying I'm waiting for another query to be completed. This query right here has a lock on that table. No other updates or deletes can happen until this finishes. So I'm going to keep running until this first process is finished. Or I come back to a tool that we have and they allow me to kill a job. So notice here that I have 51136. Do you remember that? I can actually kill this job from another window and make that happen. So let's try to do that right there. So notice my PID is going to be 51136. Now what are, so this is the name of the method that will be called. This is a function pg terminate backend with that PID. Then this right here is from our table. It's called pg stat activity. And this is our database name, learn. We can see that right here and learn. Okay, so now this PID, I'm gonna kill it. And then we will also see this process that is waiting, it will finish. Okay, let's do this. So let's kill that, okay. And now notice that it's done. So the current value for annual salary for employee one should be what? Five twos. So now you understand that there is locking involved at the table layer when we are doing transactions. Begin will actually put a lock on that table. And there you have it team, transactions in PostgreSQL. Now you understand the commit and rollback and how they work inside transactions. You understand how save points work. I exposed you to the PID and how to kill a PID. And lastly, how to kill a lock on a table. Now all these lessons are very, very important. Now if you have questions about this bit video, please leave your comments below. Remember, all the source code for this project is in my GitHub account. Thanks, and that's all I have team. Take care.